Let's move to another Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu was salam. He's also known as the Noon. Why is he known as the Noon? Because a Noon would mean the big fish. So he is the companion of the fish or of the whale, the, the huge fish. What happened to him? A beautiful story, amazing story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet Yunus in English, we would say Jonah, may peace be upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this Prophet to certain people. It is reported close to Iraq or within Iraq, within what we know as Iraq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to guide these people, to call them towards Allah and to warn them of the previous punishments and to tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send you this punishment and that punishment and he can send you in the same way he sent the previous nations and so on. And he started his work as a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he worked and he started calling his people. They were just more than a hundred thousand people and he started calling his people, but they were not listening to him. And he, he got irritated with them in the sense that he, his patience was running out. They started saying things and exactly how the others used to do, they started doing. So he decided, you know what? I'm not winning with these people. Let me go away. I might find other people somewhere very, very far away and I might call them and they might come in to the fold. They might listen. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not instructed him to go away, but he wanted to go to spread the deen because he really wanted people to accept and nobody was accepting so that irritation made him go so as he went he decided right i'm upset i'm angry i'm going and i'm going so far that i want to jump into a ship and i want to go somewhere far away over across the ocean across the sea so as he arrived at the coast there was a laden boat which was now going he jumped into it and he was gone it had goods and suddenly mashallah they went into the the sea and then the wind started blowing and then the storm started gathering, meaning subhanallah, the ship started rocking. And after a while it started sinking. And when it started sinking, the people decided we need to get rid of our goods to make it light. So they started throwing one by one, the goods, everything went out. Everything was gone. The ship is still sinking. The boat is still sinking. We don't know the exact size of it, but it was laden. By this time, all the goods were out. Now they looked at the people. They said, there's only one way of being fair we need to draw lots we need to draw lots now drawing lots meaning they had their own system whether it was you know whatever dice or whatever it was whether they put the names in a hat and picked out one whatever it was they decided we are going to choose this method and whoever's name comes we are throwing him out one by one so they gathered everything they picked out first person's name Yunus they looked at him they said no this is a good man and he's a blessed man and he's you know really an asset to the people on this boat so let's try again so now they tried again when they tried again and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the quran when they tried again amazingly they picked out the name again it was his name they looked at him they said no 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 can't be let's try again third time so they're trying again third time and after they picked the name out, they saw it was his name for the third time. So he looked, they looked at him, they said, okay, that's it. Sorry, but you're going to have to jump off. So in the middle of the sea, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and he jumped out. And as he jumped out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed a whale to eat him, to take him in. So the whale opened its mouth, and as he was in the water, Battling probably with the water, the whale came in and big gulp and he was in it. Now you can imagine water must have gone in. He went in with it and he was now in the belly of the whale, unconscious lying there. And then he gets up after a while. And let's make mention of the verses. Allah makes mention beautiful verses in the Quran. Allah says the noon that man of the the companion of the big fish when he went away remember he went away angrily he was upset with the people and he thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not get to him in punishment he thought Allah's not going to punish me because I'm going away but I'm going for the right reasons I want to go and call other people to the to the, to the cause or to the path. 
So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to hold me or hold this against me and he won't do anything to me. And Allah says, no, we are all able and capable. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it's amazing. وَإِنَّ يُونُسَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Indeed, Yunus or Jonah, may peace be upon him, is from the messengers. We believe he's a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, إِذْ أَبَقَ إِلَى الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْحُونَ فَسَاهَمَ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُدَحَضِينَ فَالْتَقَمَهُ الْحُوتُ وَهُوَ مُلِيمُ He jumped into the laden ship. Do you remember? Allah is saying, he jumped into the laden ship and then when they drew the lots, his name kept on appearing. So when he jumped off, Allah says, we instructed the whale to eat him. Now what happened? As he gets up, he obviously started noticing difficulty because you can imagine what's in the belly of a whale. These fish, they normally don't chew whatever they eat. They just gulp the whole thing and it digests inside the belly beautifully. So he started slowly but surely feeling that these enzymes are getting the better of me here his clothes were gone in a little while digested and now the skin started slowly and he called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he fell prostrate sujood in the belly of a whale in the darkness of the night the bottom of the sea and what dua he made a powerful dua, so powerful that it's mentioned in the Quran. And when the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, can we use the same dua? He said, why not? Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That is how we will save those who believe. So you can use those words. Up to this day, we are taught to use that dua. So what was the dua? Firstly, Allah says, فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ He called out in the darkness. The darknesses, the plural of darkness is used. Why? There were three darknesses. One is the darkness of the belly of the whale. Two is the darkness of the depth of the ocean or the sea. And three is the darkness of the night. Dark. Nobody would ever find you there. Today when they want to rescue people who's, meaning who have been maybe a catastrophe at sea or something, an accident or a plane crash and the people are over the sea, they've got to wait for the following morning because they cannot see. But here... Allah says, in this darkness, when he prostrated, he says, Ya Allah, I am the first human who is engaging in your worship in this place. The belly of a whale, the darkness of the ocean right down underneath. And here I am in prostration for you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, what I did was wrong. What did he do? He went away, he left his people there. Allah sent him to those people and he went away. So this was the dua. La ilaha illa anta subhanak subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen There is none worthy of worship besides you, Ya Allah. Indeed, I am from amongst the wrongdoers, Ya Allah. Have mercy on me. He's asking Allah. I am amongst the wrongdoers. None worthy of worship but you. You are the only one who can save me. The, the conviction he had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, shortly. Now there is a difference of opinion as to how long he remained in the belly of the whale. I need to say that that is not too important. What is important is he was in there. He made a dua to Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the whale to spit him out, he was spat out. So Allah says, there was a reason why we accepted his dua. He called out to Allah and the dua was accepted. And Allah says, there was a reason why we accepted the dua. فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ had he not been from amongst those who constantly remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tasbih, we he would have probably remained in the belly of that whale until the day of resurrection. Now there are two tafsirs of this particular verse. If you look at the wording, it says, had he not been from those who constantly remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means prior to this, 
He every time he remembered Allah, every day he remembered Allah. Always he engaged in the acts of worship. He was conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He engaged in his tasbihat, in praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a constant basis daily. So that is why now when he called out to Allah, Allah responded to him straight. And it is reported in one narration that when a, when a person does good deeds, it goes up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It goes up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels take it up. Allah knows that it has happened. But the angels are making, are taking a record. Why? In order to hold it for you or against you by a totally independent source. Someone might want to argue na'udhu billah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will say no, Allah says here's the witness. If someone says still no, then Allah will say right, let your hand speak. Allah says this in the Quran. If someone still says no, Allah says okay, let your legs bear witness against you and so on. So the angels take it up. So every day they used to take up this prayer. And that evening too, they took up the prayer of Yunus alayhi salam. But they say, Ya Allah, is this not this worshipper? Every day we're bringing his deeds up. Today we're hearing this call, a weak call from the bottom of the ocean, Ya Allah. Isn't it him? Allah says, yes, it's my worshipper. It is Yunus. So look, the moral of this is, if you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at times of ease, Allah will rush to you when you are in difficulty. We've said it before. You get close to Allah when your days are easy. The day a difficulty comes, you will find Allah rushing in your direction. That is what happened to Yunus alayhi salam. And that was the dua he made. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَنَبَذْنَاهُ بِالْعَرَاءِ وَهُوَ سَقِيمٌ We caused him or the whale to release him onto the coast and he was very sick, sick in the sense that his skin was quite eaten and he was naked. That is what the verse says. العراء, he was not clothed and the sun was affecting him and his skin needed some form of remedy. So Allah says, we gave him a gift. What was the next gift? Look, when Allah cures you, He does not just leave something. He cures you completely. We always say shifa and kamil and ajilan. We ask Allah for complete, immediate cure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant cure to those who are sick and ill. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْبَتْنَا عَلَيْهِ شَجَرَةً مِّن And right next to him, we caused a little tree to grow of a plant yaqteen now what is yaqteen they say it is from the gourd family so this plant grew and as it grew two three things happened he covered himself he benefited from it and he was cured subhanallah and allah says we sent him back to his people we sent him to 100000 or more than 100000 he went back to his people when he went back to his people he was shocked why was he shocked? Now, when he was away, the adab that he promised started hovering. They saw dark clouds, dark clouds coming. And they had known the stories of the previous nations. And they had seen these dark clouds. All of them looked at it. All 100,000 and more, how many ever they were, they looked at this dark cloud and they all agreed that this is the adab that was promised to us by Yunus. So they all believed in him. Every single one of them without an exception. This is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom his whole ummah accepted the message. The whole ummah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَآمَنُوا فَمَتَّعْنَاهُمْ إِلَىٰ حِينَ They all believed. So we granted them enjoyment for a little while up to a fixed time. Allahu Akbar. And in another place in the Quran, Allah makes mention beautifully of how they accepted. And Allah says, what the benefit of that exception was when they accepted Islam. Allah says, Was there any nation 
whose acceptance of the message after seeing the punishment helped them when they accepted wholesale besides the people of Yunus, there was no one else. Allah says when they saw the punishment of Allah, they accepted all of them believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says we diverted that punishment and we granted them joy for a little while. So this goes to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a chance that he did not give others. What was that chance? When the punishment was coming and they said we believe, he then took it away. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because there was not a single person who did not believe. Take a look at the others like Abu Jahl. It is reported that when he was being killed in the battle, he tells these people around him, you know what, I'm dying now, but cut my head from the bottom most part of my neck so they can see how big my head was later on. Look at this, look at this. And the Prophet ﷺ says, this one was worse than Fir'aun. At least Fir'aun, as he's drowning, he says, I believe, I believe now in, in, in the God of Moses and Aaron. Allahu Akbar, may Allah's peace be upon the messengers. But this one, Abu Jahl, not even. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And this is why to this day, the dua of the distressed, we should know, Allah hears your call. My beloved mothers and sisters, my beloved brothers, really we need to know, the darkness of the night in the furthest part of the world in the bush of anywhere wherever you are whatever it is remember Allah is hearing you you whisper Allah hears you and I want to draw your attention to something beautiful in the Quran about these two messengers the exact dua the request is not even made mention of they didn't say Ayyub alayhi salam there's no mention in the Quran that he said Ishfini cure me he just says, Ya Allah, I am wrong. You are more merciful. You are the most merciful. Allah already knew. This means he wants cure. Allah cured him. Yunus alayhi salam, what happened? He didn't say, Ya Allah, cure me. The Quran doesn't make mention of that. The Quran says, He just said, La ilaha illa anta. You are alone, the one who is worthy of worship. No one else. Subhanaka. Glory be to you. Inni kuntu dhalimin. I was definitely from amongst the wrongdoers. Ya Allah, I am from the wrongdoers. The moment he said that, Allah had mercy on him. So to admit your guilt is prime, prime. Allah already knows what you want. He's, he's put you in that condition. But the Quran does not make mention of how Yunus alayhi salam or Ayyub said, Ya Allah, I am wrong. So now I really desperately, urgently want your cure. That bit at the end, we don't hear of it in the Quran. This is the power of Allah. As we hear... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what we want to utter in dua, even though sometimes our eloquence is not good enough to say what exactly is in our heart. Allah knows. You say, Ya Allah, you see the difficulties I have, you know them better than I do, Ya Allah. You are most merciful. Allahu Akbar. That is now a dua. Because sometimes we need things, we don't know how to word it. And a point that has just come to my mind also that we can close on. Take a look at the wife. Of Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam. She served him. She was dedicated. Many, many years. She, then she asked that one question. Fair enough. The question was asked. Thereafter everything happened and mashallah it was all sorted out. But bring it to our lives. Today, whether it is in marriage or at home or anywhere else. A small thing goes wrong and a person says, right, I'm fed up. You can't afford me anymore. I want to go home. Wallahi, it's happening. Today you take a look at young girls. Young boys, more so I'd like to advise the young girls. Don't think that when you get married, you just must look for a, a man who already is a millionaire and everything and there's a jigsaw puzzle and you the last puzzle to just come and fit in and everything's going to be okay. That's not how it works. No, you're going to marry someone. He'll probably have stages and steps. You'll have days which are good and days which might not be that good. And it's all up and down and that's how it is. Subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. Even those who are wealthy, there will come a day when you suffer a loss. There will come a day. It depends how you take the loss. Sometimes you have a person very, very wealthy, multimillionaire. He suffers 100,000 and he's depressed. Whereas there is a man who's got 50 rands. Now someone says, you owe me 60. He's 10 rands behind and he's still happy. He says, inshallah, tomorrow I'll come with your 10 rands. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Wallahi, these are the days to be thankful to Allah. Tomorrow we have an appointment with Musa alayhi salatu wa salam story. Insha'Allah by the will of Allah until then. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.